Manchester United 2, Liverpool 1. And that's football. Football prevailed today. Literally, everyone on paper, most pundits, most fans, all said that Liverpool should win this game. Including myself. I didn't, after the poor start from United, the players heads down, not pressing, not working hard. It was hard to see how they could get something. But football prevails. Football is a game that surprises you. It excites you. It just out of the blue, when everything points the other way, Manchester United win this game. And to be completely honest, Eric Ten Hag needs to get a lot of credit for this. I said in previous podcasts that I felt he's almost being forced to make adjustments, change the players. I've heard fans say he's got to build something, he's got to continue with the players he's got. But he was forced into making some changes, finding players that he believes will do the simple things in football, the working hard, the pressure. And he made, he made some big statement changes. He dropped Maguire, he dropped Ronaldo, he dropped Shaw, and he dropped Fred. Now, regardless as if we do, we are happy with that, or we agree with that, it worked. And the two names in particular, Maguire and Ronaldo, was, ver- in my opinion, very justified. And you could see the tactics, the setup was to get pace in behind and up front, to really cause issues to that Liverpool back four especially as we know that they can push high when they have the ball Trent and Robertson going forward so what he did really was he decided to put Rashford up front he put Alanga left wing and he put Sancho right wing they're three pacey players three raw players that at times get the ball and run it worked first half Liverpool couldn't really they didn't look up they didn't look with the pace of the game and the biggest downfall for Liverpool was the midfield um, can you say Klopp got it wrong dropping Fabinho I know he has had a poor poor start to the season hasn't looked quite up to fitness potentially or match sharpness but what we see when Liverpool have him is it's almost becomes he sits so sort of in front of that back two it almost can at times become a back three when Trent and Robertson bomb forward so it gives them that extra man and I didn't see that yesterday with Henderson, Milner and Elliot I suppose it was meant to be Milner I didn't think he had a good game he was trying to you know G up the team of course he's experienced he knows the situation and you saw it when they, when uh, United scored their first goal, having a real go at Van Dijk for not getting closer. But when you look at then his overall game, giving the ball away, some of the careless passing from Liverpool was, it wasn't Liverpool at times. It wasn't what we are known. And that's only their own downfall, really, because we say downfall, but them, them and City have set the bar so high they're expected to get 95 plus points both of them which is even more ridiculous let alone just one team and I really liked the way United played in that first half in particular they won the battles they won the second ball because you see uh, Liverpool they like to play fairly direct you see Trent try and switch the ball you see Van Dijk hit some lovely switches and they can look perfect but then when Trent does do that ball and the ball is headed down by by Varane or Martinez or whoever it was United were the team to get on the second balls quite quite often Liverpool use that as a tactic it causes chaos when they win the second third ball United dealt with that and then suddenly if they were managed to find the pass through the middle you saw a lot of space for Rashford, Sancho and Alanga second half Eric Ten Hag 
it, towards the end of that first half, Liverpool started to come on top. I think it got to something like 70-80% possession. Liverpool were really pushing and it felt like United were getting deeper and deeper. As expected at 1-0 up, but it was starting to get a little bit like, if they do this for another 45 minutes, can they hold out? Is it going to be just backs to the wall? But what he did is he brought on Anthony Martial. Now, he's got a lot of critics because it was a little bit at one stage as if he wasn't good enough or he went out on loan last season and there's a bit of controversy of some some fans wanting him some fans not he was incredible and to be honest he changed that game he gave them what they needed and in that last 20 minutes of the first half there was times where Rashford wasn't doing the hold up play he wasn't taking the pressure off he needed the ball to stick up there so United could get out otherwise they were just penned in at times Rashford would get the ball and I, I even saw him smash the ball up pitch like as if we were five minutes to go he has to be the man but anyway he made the change Martial was now that man and he put Rashford on the left suddenly you saw United holding on to the ball but not just holding on to the ball and getting out Martial was actually making attacks he was slipping the ball through and we saw that in the second goal he held the ball I think it was against Van Dijk he turned he slipped it through and bang Rashford scores he changed that game in my opinion and that's why Eric Ten Hag needs a lot of credit for the in-game management and the team selection two other standout players for me Martinez very very good I understand there'll be games to come this season where they'll have more physical strikers and that's been his criticism to date. I don't buy too much of like he's a he's a short defender but he was right up for it and played very very well. Also Malassia haven't worked out why it's taken until now to bring him in but handled Salah pretty well all game I understand Salah managed to get a goal back but Malassia was one of United's best players in terms of Liverpool I don't believe too much of the oh my god they're going to struggle for top 4 they're going they're going to have a real drop off season and I understand there's a lot of people saying two years ago they had that season where they, they finished third but they weren't really challenging they almost took to the to the to the foot off the pedal in a way. I think their season is going to start pretty much next week, and the reason I say that is they've got Bournemouth at home, right? I think that could be a confidence booster, and that's me, you know, predicting them to win. But the biggest thing for Liverpool. And I don't want to make too many excuses, but they have got a lot of injuries. The likes of Matip, Canate, that's two centre halves right there. Jota, Curtis Jones, Thiago. And the reason I picked that next week game out is they have a Bournemouth team which were made to look very poor by Arsenal. They now have to travel to Anfield and I don't see it changing I think this would be the confidence booster that Klopp's side need and then as I'm aware of the 3rd of September Jota Matip and Jones I think it is oh sorry and Nunes because he's banned Nunes I forgot about Nunes Nunes obviously had that mental sort of moment and teams may look to do that but he's going to make a difference when they come back so that's four players they're potentially getting back on the 3rd of September so they get a confidence booster against Bournemouth and then they get four key players but I go back to it he has to be playing Fabinho in the midfield in my opinion I do think that there's a lot of talk about them needing strength and I do I am quite surprised that they haven't found a target well they did they found Chiuameni as their target Real Madrid signed him then there was talks of Bellingham it looks like they may push for that next summer I'm surprised but I understand Liverpool don't aren't that sort of team to panic by 
or panic a midfielder just because of these results. Now some people might think that's a little bit silly or a little bit stupid because they're already seven points off Arsenal for example. But I do think this this Premier League this season and it has been going over previous seasons apart from City and Liverpool setting the bar so high teams can get points and teams are catching up slightly I do feel that there's games that teams will drop this season and I just think that when they get going they'll get back to where they were I'm not saying I'm not necessarily predicting that they they can go win the league from now and I'm, but I'm also not saying that these drop points have cost them the league there's a long season to go I do I don't really want to just say I blame Klopp but I do think he got the midfield wrong last night and in terms of United they got it right the worry I have for United going forward is it's always the next game can they back it up and this sort of tactics we've actually seen the sort of counter the sort of pace up front we've actually seen if anything that worked the most for Man United in previous seasons under Rolly etc etc so when they become again up against a team that are sitting back and they and United have the ball will they be able to break down teams and that's where it goes. United have to back this up. The next two games are Southampton and Leicester. They have to go and win those. If they lose against Southampton, or even draw, or they go and lose against a, a, a pretty shot Leicester team, you're just back, it's circles again. You're back to square one. Yes, they got up for the Derby game. They won the Derby game. But you'll be back to square one. So Eriksen Haag gets credit and he needs to really drill in and start to show this United team, show this United players what they can do. And obviously that could be a sort of platform to build off. They beat arguably one of the best teams in the league. They beat their rivals. And they got a lot of their fans back on side with that win. So... It's a big season. There's long. There's a long way to go. That's why I don't like to get ahead of myself. But what games we're seeing have been quite, quite magical, really. And that's why I say football prevailed. Thanks for watching the video. We live streamed on Twitch yesterday. Fallen Giants podcast. We watched the game. Please check that out when we're next live. And please go over to the channel and hit that like, comment, subscribe button. If you like my video and subscribe to this channel, please hit the notification bell so when I upload another video, you'll see. Cheers, guys. Peace.